25 million tons of plastic waste is produced by Europe each year. In France alone, 5 billion plastic cups are thrown away annually. Like many other countries across the world, France faces a monumental plastic waste problem. And this is driving a growing number of campaigners and entrepreneurs to challenge the way that plastic is used and made. Will they be able to end the country's dependence on this all-pervasive material? 25% of all plastic is recycled in France, with the rest ending up in landfills, or worse, illegally dumped. I'm meeting councillor and environmental campaigner Arash Derembache at one of the many tips surrounding Paris. Lorsque vous voyez par exemple ici tous les plastiques, c'est un problème. Et c'est un problème. C'est-à-dire qu'on a construit en fait des, matéri des, ma des matériaux et on ne sait pas quoi en faire après. C'est absurde. Il y a plus de 100 milliards, 100 milliards de sacs plastiques qui sont euh, dilapidés dans le monde. Nous, en France, on a entre 3 et 5 milliards. C'est énorme. Nous avons fait voter une loi en France en 2015. C'est que les supermarchés ne peuvent plus vendre des sacs euh, d'une certaine dimension dans les supermarchés, notamment, ou dans les centres de vente. Pourquoi Parce que on a essayé d'enclencher cette révolution écologique. France's 2015 ban is a good start to encourage people to reduce their reliance on plastic. But the next target is 2020, when the country will be the first to ban single-use items like plastic cups, plates and cutlery. So I'm embarking on a road trip around France to find out how ready industry and people are for the changes ahead. First stop, some roadside services. So I just stopped to get some water and a coffee. There's plastic everywhere. One thing is clear. It's going to take serious innovation to wean us off plastics. But on the beach in San Malo, there's a possible solution. David Coty manages Algopack, a startup creating plastic from seaweed. So why is seaweed good as a plastics alternative? Great advantage of seaweed is uh, renewable and it's unlimited. We don't uh, need to harvest seaweed on a field and uh, it's uh, fully biodegradable. It goes back to the sea. What is it about seaweed scientifically? The makeup, what is it that makes it? Basically, what is good in seaweed is the polymer chain, which is very similar to the polymer chain you can find in the uh, oil based plastics. Petroleum based polymers are long chains of carbon atoms bonded together. These are produced synthetically to form conventional plastic, but they can also be made from a wide range of biomaterials like vegetable oil or algae, like seaweed. David has asked me to help him to collect the brown variety, which also happens to be a non-native species. The real idea that we have is to take the seaweed, uh, which is invasive, which is a pollution, in fact, and which is, uh, at the date of today, burnt. So this can be a plastics alternative? So it's not going to be a plastic. It's going to be a material, bio-based, fully bio-based material, uh, which will have certain characteristics similar to plastics. Algopack started in 2010. And each year they sell 40 tons of 100% bioplastic made from hundreds of tons of seaweed. Here it is, our treasure. Xavier Le Mataillé is in charge of production at the plant. What are the other ingredients that are in this vat? Ça, on donne pas tous les ingrédients qu'on met dedans. C'est le savoir-faire, ça. Xavier is playing this one close to his chest. It is commercially sensitive, after all. And from where I stand, the process looks involved. First, the seaweed is turned into something that looks like Play-Doh before it's dried in an oven for 15 hours. After that, it's pulverized. This batch here is destined to become flower pots. What exactly does this machine do? Elle permet de transformer la poudre en produit algopac. Okay. Donc c'est une transformation qui se fait en fonction des critères de température et de pression qu'on a défini. C'est-à-dire qu'on a mis au point un programme 
qui nous permet effectivement d'assurer la transformation de la poudre en matériaux solides. There we go. Straight to the garden center. We have 16 small flower pots. How long does something like this take to decompose? It can take uh, up to four months, 12 months, depending as well on the coating that we can uh, provide. If this was a plastic pot, how long would that take to decompose? 500 years. It will last 500 years in the nature. So you're looking at 500 years against four months. Do you see a gap in the market for your product? The law um, will give a room in the market. But this room should be at the same price. 98% of the people are ready to go for something which is greener, which is better for the environment, but at the same price. Right now, Algopack is the more expensive option for consumers. But David's hopeful that in 12 to 18 months, they can step up production to offer products that are only 15% more expensive than conventional plastics. The seaweed alternative to plastic was really impressive. But there are limitations. Commercial viability is a super important thing. But if these can be overcome, I think it's got potential. With the ban looming, startups around France are experimenting with plastic alternatives from materials like milk and cornstarch. I'm off to see another venture in Sant. Nicolas Mouflet is an engineer who recently has developed what he calls the vegan bottle from an ingredient found in most of our cupboards in its refined form. What is this product that you want to show us? It's sugar cane. Sugar cane? Yes. How do you turn this into this? La première étape, c'est qu'à partir de la canne à sucre, on va réussir à faire un premier granulé oui. euh, qui ressemble à du plastique, mais c'est du bioplastique. Ensuite, ces granulés, on va les transformer en petits tubes, c'est une préforme qui va nous permettre de fabriquer différentes bouteilles. Donc voici euh, un exemple d'une bouteille euh, à partir de la canne à sucre euh, qu'on fabrique ici dans notre usine pour nos clients. Where does the sugar cane come from? Indonésie. Indonesia. Oui. And who does the transformation from the sugar cane to these pellets here? Pour la première étape, c'est fait en Indonésie. Et après, en France, on transforme ça dans un nouveau compound, un nouveau granulé, pour pouvoir faire justement nos préformes et nos bouteilles. As at the other plant, Nicolas is guarding his formula closely. I can see why. The results look good. So it's actually food, a food product. Yes. So if I, I finished my juice in this bottle oui. and I want to dispose of it, I don't necessarily need to put it in the plastics waste. You put it in the food waste. On met ça effectivement avec les déchets alimentaires pour que ça soit composté. Quelques mois, euh, un peu moins de six mois, si c'est dans un composteur industriel, pour disparaître proprement euh, dans la terre. That's amazing. But to reduce the need to grow and transport sugarcane, I can't help feeling it would be better to simply reuse them. Nevertheless, Nicolas vegan bottles are a success. He's had orders for two million last year and expects even more for 2018. But like the seaweed packaging, these bottles are more expensive than conventional plastic, 25% more expensive to be precise. So, could something like this really take off? So I'm here in beautiful La Rochelle, and I've been told that this cafe sells the sugarcane bottles. I'm curious to know if anyone can tell the difference, or if it even matters to them. So does this look like plastic to you? Oui, pour moi, ça ressemble à du plastique, oui. And how does it feel to know that it's not plastic? Bah, pour moi, c'est étonnant, parce que j'aurais cru vraiment que c'était du plastique, et c'est pas plus mal pour l'environnement. Does that affect your decision to purchase these types of bottles? Of course, it's good to purchase something and be able to uh, be good for, with the environment. That was an overwhelmingly positive response, and it gives me lots of hope for the future. But is it really going to be so easy to rid ourselves of plastics? I'm heading back to Paris to meet up again with activist Arash to find out what he thinks. Arash, can we just stop using plastic? Oui, on peut stopper le plastique, mais ça va mettre du temps. Et pour cela, ça doit être un mouvement global. Les citoyens 
et des politiques, mais aussi des entreprises. Parce que dans cette, dans cette histoire, les lobbies ont beaucoup d'influence. Donc il faut que les politiques disent aux lobbies non, mais on va vous aider à faire autre chose. France's ban is a significant step in the right direction. It will take bold political moves like this, plus ingenuity and better choices on everyone's part to make plastic a thing of the past.